Here we are with 1.2 of the first chapter. So this is dealing with radicals now. We dealt with absolute value last time. Now we're looking at radical operations. Operations being just uh, algebraically manipulating them. Okay, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. Uh, how do we deal with the radicals? Uh, one thing that you might want to learn or relearn is how you deal with exponents. Okay. Um, there are exponent laws that we need to be made aware of, and I will like maybe I should make a video for those exponent laws just to remind you. Uh, but right now we're going to deal with these radical operations, okay? Now, first of all, we need to understand what a radical is, and this indeed here is what we call the radical, okay? This symbol right here. Now, I'll show you down here. Uh, that number outside is called the index. The number on the inside is called the radicand, and the symbol that we all know as square root is actually called the radical. Now, we can have a square root. Notice that if there's a square root, we don't write the 2, okay? The 2 not written, it's just... Uh, implied. Just like if I have x, for example, uh, that's the same as saying 1x to the power of 1 over 1. These are all ones that we don't need, okay? So a square root, we don't put the 2, but if we have a cube root, we have to put the cube in there. Fourth root, fifth root, okay? This is how we name them. This is how we uh, <coughs> uh, refer to them, the cube root, okay? Now, there's a few things that we're going to deal with uh, with regards to roots. Uh, I'll show you a few different uh, rules and tricks and sort of uh, just tips to help you work through a lot of these questions. But before we deal with that, we have to understand and distinguish between even and odd, even and odd indexes, okay? Because we know, for example, that I cannot take the square root of negative 4. You cannot do it. But I can take the square root of positive 4, right? I can take the square root of positive 4. Well, those are things that we know, uh, but they also apply to higher indexes, okay? So let's look at a couple examples here. If uh, in a given expression like this, uh, n and a, n is your index and a is on the inside, okay? What would happen if a is positive and n is even? So let's choose the square root. We'll put it in and choose a positive number. Let's choose 9. Well, let's start like this. If x squared is equal to 9, how would you solve this? Well, we're going to be dealing with radicals and learning how to solve them. We need to solve for x, so how do you get rid of the squared? You do the opposite function, the inverse, right? Understand that the inverse is the, it's just undoes it. So uh, to undo addition, you subtract. To undo multiplication, you divide. To undo squaring, you square root. So you square root this side, you square root this side. And what we end up having is the possibility of two answers. We know that x could be either negative 3 or it could be positive 3. Because negative 3 squared is positive and positive 3 squared is positive. Okay? Now we're going to have to come into uh, talk about something else here. Uh, and this other thing is called the principal root. Okay? Now if I actually asked you simply for the square root of 9, you're going to tell me that it's 3. It's only 3. Okay, the square root of 9 is 3. That is what they call a principal root. When you are solving an equation like this, if I say x squared is equal to 9, and you want to find out what would make this equation true, you need to do some algebraic stuff here. And through that process, you end up with the two possible solutions. So now, I'm going to say, okay, if I want to solve this, I have to take the square root of that side, and I have to take the square root of that side which means x is equal to plus or minus 3. So there's a difference between solving using radicals, solving an equation using radicals, and uh, just finding the square root of a number. Okay? That distinction will come up again soon. Don't you worry about it. Now, if a is negative and n is even. So let's think about this. If I have a 9 in here, right? Oh, wait, no. Let's go negative 9 and n is even, let's go, let's just use the square root because they're all the same. The square roots, the fourth roots, the sixth roots, the eighth roots, they all work exactly the same. And if you have a square root, can you take the square root of a negative number? And the answer to this is no. Okay, the answer to this is no. So you do not, you can't have any solutions. You can't have any solutions, right? So there are no solutions in this case. And here we have two possible solutions. Okay? Now, there is something here. You may learn that the square root of negative 1 actually does have a value. It is not, however, a real number. 
It's not part of our real number system because the square root of negative one doesn't really exist, but we give it a value of i, and that i stands for imaginary. Those are imaginary numbers. So if I have the square root of negative nine, ne negative nine okay, it's actually equal to three i. You do not need to know that, but it is, anyways, uh, a point of interest, hopefully, okay? Now, we dealt with even roots, even roots, okay? What about odd roots? If n is odd, so let's look at the cube root of a number. That would be beneficial to know what a perfect cube is. That's going to be the next step, okay? Uh, in the next chapter, we're going to deal with perfect squares and perfect cubes and perfect powers of 4. Uh, just to bring it to your attention, a perfect square is a number that you can take the square root of, like 4 is 2, square root of 9 is 3, square root of 16 is 4, okay? A perfect cube would be the number that you can take the cube root of. So, for example, the cube root of 8 is 2, and the cube root of 27 is 3, and the cube root of 64 is, well, let me put the 3 there, uh, is 4, okay? So I'm going to use the cube root of 8, and you guys can tell me that that's 2, right? How about the cube root of negative 8? Can I put a negative number underneath an odd index? Well, if you think about what it means, it means what number times itself three times in this case would give me a negative eight. And I'm hoping that you understand that if I multiply negative numbers together, so for example, minus two times minus two is positive four. If I multiply by negative two again, it becomes negative eight. And then positive 16. And then negative 32 positive 64. Ne so negatives work. Okay, you can take the cube root of a negative number. You can take the fifth root of a negative number. So if n is odd, then there is one solution. And it could be either positive or negative. Okay, so those uh, that's just sort of an introduction to the different indexes, the different indices, I guess would be the proper uh, plural term. And I will show you um, a few tricks now, okay? A few little, these are kind of useful things. So we need to be comfortable going from radicals to exponents, okay? And one of the first things that we look at is uh, this thing here, okay? So if I have the square root of x, that's the same as x to the 1 half. If I have the cube root of x, that's the same as saying x to the 1 third. Okay? Now what happens, say, if there is um, a number on your exponent, or an exponent on your radicand, right? So in that case, we're going to have, so for example, um, the cube root of x squared would be x to the power of two-thirds. And you should be able to go back and forth, right? So if I had x to the power of three-quarters, the four is the index, and that number on top, you see what I'm saying here? Okay, guys, hopefully you can make some sense of that. Um, I would like to bring something to your attention from grade 10 here, and that's this point right here, okay? Um, if you've got an index and an exponent, it actually doesn't matter which way you do it. And a perfect mm -hmm. example of this is if I said had the fourth root of 81 cubed. Okay? Some of you might be able to see that this is the same as saying 81 to the power of 3 quarters. And if you use your calculator and did 81 to the power of 0 0.75 or 3 over 4, since those are the same thing, you're going to get an answer. Okay? If you did this on your calculator, you'd get an answer. But there are ways of doing this uh, without using your calculator. And I can't give you what 81 cubed is, but what I want you to see is that this can be written two ways. It can be written like this, or it can be written like this. And in this case, I do know that the fourth root of 81 is three, which means that I can now do three cubed, which is 27. So I really, really, really want to stress the importance of um, understanding how these are the same, okay? And there's the example right here that they're exactly the same, okay? Uh, what we also have to deal with, ladies and gentlemen, are exponents, uh, negative exponents. So remember, a negative exponent means that it becomes positive down below. So for example, x to the negative 2 is 1 over x squared. Well, if your exponent is a fraction, if your exponent is a fraction, it's still, it's still the same thing, right? So x to the power of 2 thirds, negative 2 thirds, 
is equal to 1 over x to the power of positive 2 thirds. And then we just put it back into a radical. No big deal. Okay. Uh, what's another one? So here's a, here's a bunch of things that we'll hopefully remember. Remember that if you have an nth root of a fraction, you can split it up, right? Um, remember uh, that if you have a multiplication, for example, if you have the cube root of x times the cube root of y, that would be the cube root of xy. If you have the square root of x times the square root of y, that's the square root of xy. If you have the cube root of x, times the square root of y, you actually can't do anything with that because it's a cube root and a square root, okay? Um, you can't combine them, so they have to have the same index in order to combine them. Uh, there's a lot of things here that we deal with uh, with radicals. Now, I've seen a lot of you, you know, wonder what we do with something like this. Uh, the square root of 4 times the square root of 2 would simply be the square root of 8. Can I add them together at all? You know, you can't do anything with this. But what about if I had the square root of 3 plus the square root of 3? You don't combine them on the inside. You combine them on the outside because you have one of these root 3s and then another one root 3, which gives you two root 3s. Lots of different types of questions and problems that we can have with these radicals. Okay, let's look at a bunch of examples. Uh, I'm going to show you here um, the square root of x squared. Another thing that might be good to show you on here, sorry, I'll run back to here, is if I have the nth root of x to the m, if your index and your radical or your exponent are the same, it basically just cancels each other out and you call it x, right? So that would be, for example, the square root of x squared is simply x, right? You're looking for perfect squares. I'd like you to think about this concept that we did simplifying radicals before in grade 10. Remember, we looked at the square root of 50 and I asked you to simplify it. Well, what you need to do is you need to go, okay, what's a perfect square that goes into 50? 25 and times 2. That means we can break it up. This is one of the rules of radicals. You can separate them. And the square root of 25 is 5, root 2. This is what we call an entire radical. This is what we call a mixed radical. Okay, so um, this is how we can work through some of these. Um, let me see if you can uh, figure out how to simplify some of these. So what we're looking at is taking out perfect squares. We did it with numbers. You can find a perfect square is 25. But can you do it with variables? Well, I'm hoping that you can see that this is the same as the square root of. Well, let's take a perfect square out of this. x squared times x. Well, you know that that's going to be the square root of x squared times the square root of x. So it's just x root x, right? Now, if I have x to the power of 4, well, there's a couple ways that you could look at this. You could look at it like this. If you converted it to um, exponents, it'd be x to the power of 4 over 2, which is just x squared. That's it. You could look at it another way. It's in the perfect squares, x squared times x squared. When you multiply with the same base, you add the exponents. Well, that's the same as writing this, which is just x times x, which is x squared. You'll notice, hopefully, a pattern between the power on the radicand and the index. Let's try x to the power of 5. That is a 5 here. Right? If we broke it into perfect squares, x squared, x squared, and I've got one more x. Well, the square root of x squared is x, another x, and then a root x, or x squared root x, okay? Hopefully you can take a sec, look at this one, see if you can make some sense out of it, right? And you'll see that you could break it into x squared times x squared times x squared, hopefully. Um, boom boom, which gives you x times x times x, which is x cubed. All right. Now, here are a bunch of questions that I'm going to ask you to try. And I will go over them one by one. So let's start up here. You can think about it as the square root of 16 times the square root of x squared. Both of those are perfect squares, so it simply becomes 4x. 
try to think of them separately. As an entire radicand, it can be a little confusing, but let's deal with the numbers and then the variables separately. Square root of nine is three. And if you look at the cubed up here, right, if you looked at the cubed up there, wherever it was, um, you'll see that it breaks down to x squared and x, right? So the x squared can come out. So let me just look at something. Let's put perfect squares there, x, and then x squared, and then x. The square root of nine is three. The square root of x squared is x, and I have a root x left. And there's your answer. Okay, what about this one? Can you take the square root of six? No, you can't. Can you take the square root of x squared? x to the power of six. Yes, it's x squared, x squared, x squared. Y is y squared, y squared, y. Let's look at all the perfect squares. One, two, three x's means x cubed on the outside. One, two y's means y squared on the outside. What's left on the inside? The six and the y. Boom, you're done. Okay, and it's the same thing, ladies and gentlemen, over and over and over. Let's try the next ones. The cube root is 64. Well, it'd be a good idea to have a list of cubes. If you don't know how to use it on your calculator, maybe you could try and figure out how to find a cube root on your calculator. I'll show you if you need it. Every calculator is a little bit different, but it just so happens that the cube root of 64 is 4. Well, what's the cube root of negative 64? Since it's an index, it can be a negative. It's a negative 4. There you go. Now, let's throw some variables in there. Cube roots. So what we're looking at is taking out perfect cubes. 2 is not a perfect cube, so that has to stay in there. Okay, so the 2. But the x to the power of 5, a perfect cube is x to the power of 3, and leaves me with an x squared. And then I have y cubed. That's a perfect cube, so let's take it out. Boom, boom. Those can come out, so it becomes x, y. And then I have the cube root of what else is left? 2x squared. And you are done with that. Okay? Mm -hmm. Look at a couple more. A couple more examples. Mo, mo, mo. 4 through to 16. Well, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So I know the answer to that is 2. Now, can you take the fourth root of a negative 16? Hmm. Well, you know what? Call it 2i if you want. But we're going to say because it's an even root, you can't take the even root of a negative number. So no working. All right? Let's use variables now. So fourth root of, let's make perfect powers of 4, which would be x to the power of 4. And then we break it down to x to the power of, well, whatever's left is x to the power of 3, right? And then we have y to the power of 4 times y. Perfect power of 4, perfect power of 4, x, y. What's left on the inside? x cubed and y. Okay, I think we got one more row here, and then I'll leave you alone for now. This one becomes a little bit weird um, if you want to do it in a couple different ways. You can think about it a couple different ways. It's a little tricky. How the hell do we deal with these? Well, you know that there's a 2 in here. You could convert it into exponents if you want. So the inside would be x to the power of 1 half, all to the power of 1 third, right? All to the power of 1 third. So I'll explain to you how we can find these answers. So any power to a power, your law is that you multiply exponents. So it's x to the power of 1 sixth which is the sixth root of x. Now tell me how we could have got a sixth index here, right? And if you think about it, you just multiply the indices together, and it gives you six, all right? In this case, too, cube root and then sixth root. Okay, well, that means that it's going to be the sixth root of uh, x squared y. That's it, done, okay? Um, sometimes, you know, with these questions, they're going to say, oh, it can only be a positive or a negative number. Uh, your answers in the back of the book will say, oh, it has to be an absolute value of a number. So, uh, for example, if I was going to ask you for the square root of um, x, you know, the answer to this, well, x has to be greater than or equal to zero, which basically means the absolute value of x. That's all we're talking about. Okay, we're going to start looking at what we call restrictions. What values of x work? What values of x don't work? Um, we'll get to that a little bit later. That's long enough now. Uh, if you have any questions, folks, do not forget to ask.